Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today let's compare and taste side by side two of the greatest and loudest champagnes, Dom Perignon and Cristal. Not only are these two champagnes amongst the most sought after in the wine world, but they also dictate premium prices and are associated with luxurious lifestyle. What is rare though is that these wines are highly valued and respected by both regular wine consumers and highly engaged wine professionals. Both champagnes are prestige cuvée, meaning that they are the best and highest quality champagnes of their respective estates. And interestingly, both of these champagnes had a significant influence in defining this category and are often considered to be the very first prestige cuvée champagnes ever made. While Cristal is a prestige cuvée of Louis Roderer estate, Dom Perignon stands proudly on its own. Even though prestige cuvée can be non-vintage, both Dom Perignon and Cristal are single vintage, released only in the best years. Or to put it more accurately, vintages considered worthy by the winemaker and the team. Both of these champagnes are known for their impressive aging potential. I mean, if I didn't open them right here now with you guys, I would probably put them aside for some years or even decades. In my younger years, I myself sometimes criticized people for opening these champagnes too soon, but I have grown to understand that we can do as we please with our precious bottles. Dom Perignon is a champagne produced in large quantities sourced from the both estate-owned vineyards and purchased grapes, yet its quality remains consistently very, very high. In contrast to the best of my knowledge, Cristal is made only from the vineyards owned by the Louis Roederer estate. Naturally, each vintage will determine the exact blend of the grapes, as it is rarely pre-selected formula. While Dom Perignon usually shows balance between Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in terms of a blend, with Chardonnay tending to slightly dominate, Cristal follows a similar pattern, with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir having similar proportions, but it is Pinot Noir that usually dominates. I wish I had the opportunity to get my hands on two same vintage champagnes, however, they were sold out and unavailable in my market. Therefore, I chose the easiest route, if I may, by getting the latest releases from each estate. For Cristal, it is warm and sunny 2015 vintage, while for Dom Perignon, it is challenging but highly praised vintage 2013. Given that these champagnes are not cheap, let's pop them open Taste them and see which one is better for your next special event or victory to celebrate, shall we? Champagnes are open, some with little bit of shower and I'm not sure with which I should start with. Dom Perignon or Cristal? Dom Perignon or Cristal? I will start with the one closest to me, so Dom Perignon 2013. I just love this aroma, like in general, aroma of champagne. It is biscuity, it is ripe yellow and white fruits. It's just so inviting and lovely and it just screams celebration for me, even if there's nothing to celebrate. Dom Perignon is quite reductive on the nose. It shows these crunchy, bright fruit flavors and some lazy, yeasty characters but it does not allow them to overpower the fruit. It is still very inviting and lively. And also some white blossom, some spring blossom on the nose. Let's taste it. Wow. <laughs> what a concentration and intensity. And I mean, what is about Dom Perignon that it is just so approachable in its youth? I mean, there is no doubt that these wines can age. I've tasted some back vintages and they just age beautifully, but I can enjoy it right now. It is just so pleasant right now. The acidity is quite high. I just feel my saliva coming back. It, but it, what, I was, what I wanted to say is that it is still very inviting and, and, and open at this very moment. So let's move to Cristal. So Cristal is vintage 2015, which is considered warm and sunny, as I mentioned before. Hmm. So here we have some smokiness on the nose. It is not as fruit driven, as, as open as the Dom Perignon was. It is a bit tighter and a bit closed, shy maybe. And it is showing some, some preserved lemon, some lemon peel notes. 
and some white blossom as well, um, cherry blossom, orange blossom. It seems broader and bigger and rounder, but it has that kind of steely acidity that just cuts through the fruit and the intensity of the wine. And I think that overall palette of this wine, the broadness or kind of the roundness of it, it is thanks to the vintage because Cristal overall tends to have that precision and focus that only opens up a little bit with age. But here on the palette, it seems more open than on the nose. Palette wise, it is kind of more ready to be enjoyed. You know what? I just heard that my cameraman is drooling, so I will share this glass of Cristal with him. <laughs> Cheers. I will continue drinking my Dom Perignon. Do you want to exchange? <laughs> So if you want me to rate these wines, I will say this. I will rate them out of 10, as I always do. And Dom Perignon, I will give 9.6, with potentially becoming 9.8 with time. Because you know, these wines develop with age, they add, they gain more complexity, the acidity becomes better integrated, and they might not be as nervy, you know, but, but they kind of calm down and they become these really vinos and, and long-lasting wines that you can just smell, not drink even at all. For Cristal, I will give 9.5 with the potential becoming 9.8 as well. I mean, I know that this producer is great. I read one wine critic writer, S.C. Avalon, master of wine, by the way, she said that nothing bad leaves Louis Roederer estate, uh, leaves the house. This is epic champagne and they would not declare 2015 vintage if they wouldn't think that this vintage deserves to be placed on its own. So, but I think that that broadness maybe here is, is the reason why I scored it a bit lower, but for sure, I mean, I would like to taste these wines later, 10 years later, 20 years later, and see where they go. I do think, however, that 2013 vintage have longer aging potential as opposed to 2015, but these are just being released wines, and wines live their own life and develop on their own, and sometimes whatever we wine professionals, wine critics, wine writers uh, say it's not always the case. And uh, sometimes when we review wine uh, to be age worthy for another 10 or 20 years, it develops beautifully, but quite fast. And then there are other wines that we rate maybe not as age worthy or maybe not having the same potential as others. And yet they develop slowly and it takes a long, long time for them to reach the potential. So for your closest celebration or special event, pop open Dom Perignon. It is beautiful now, it will be beautiful after 10 or 20 years. And if you are looking to buy some vintage champagne of your children's birthday that you want to open 20 years from now, I think Cristal will be a great option, though Dom Perignon also will be there. <laughs> no, no doubt. By the way, let me know in the comments which champagnes you would like me to review or maybe taste next to each other. And Merry Christmas! Many critics agree that one of the most elegant rosé champagne is made by Dom Perignon, so make sure to watch my other video about what's so special about Dom Perignon rosé.